Welcome everybody on the live stream as well. Uh, anyone watching from home, it's very good to have you with us. Um, we've, as usual these days, got a, a handful of people scattered around the church here in the building at St. Nicholas's. And uh, if you're able to come on a future Sunday, you're very welcome to. Um, just send an email so we know how many to expect. And we, we've never had to turn anyone away. We're not full yet, so please don't hold back from booking in. I welcome to regular members and visitors for St. Nicholas's Barthampton, but also for St. Mary's Claverton. Um, there are no St. Mary's members here in the building, but I uh, welcome those who are watching from home. Um, we haven't got a nine, didn't have a nine o'clock service this morning in Claverton, but this is a, a service for the whole benefice now on YouTube. And it's going to be a slightly more informal style than we normally have at either of the churches. Um, in sort of post-Christmas mode, I don't know what life's like in, in your home, but uh, certainly we're slowing down now and uh, enjoying some informal time. And this time of year as well is a really good time to be looking back over the year we've just had, um, perhaps this year more than others. There are things to, to look back on. With the question, what have you learned or how have you grown? Um, I'll come back to that uh, in a minute, but there'll be opportunity to text in. Let's just, we had a prayer here in the, in the building before we started the live stream, but let's have a prayer all together now as well. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for the wonderful message of God with us. Thank you that he came to save. And thank you for the annual celebration of Christmas and all that that can mean for us in our families and in our church family. And we bring before you the pain that there may have been at restrictions on our Christmas celebrations this year. And thank you that you understand and know what is happening and are in control. And thank you that nothing can stop us being your people. Thank you for the privilege of gathering together as your people in Jesus' name. And so we remember the basis on which we are your people. Your forgiveness because of Jesus' death and resurrection for us. We confess to you our need of forgiveness, ways in which we've fallen short and left you out of our lives, ways in which we've hurt one another in our families and beyond. Please forgive and heal us and help us to fix our eyes on Jesus and to enjoy the freedom of living as his and your forgiven people. In Jesus' name, amen. We've, uh, some of us in our home with the younger members of the family um, read through the Bible a little bit each evening and we've been using the Action Bible. We've just got to the end of the Action Bible and started something new, um, which is we've dug out this Diary of a Disciple, which I haven't seen before. It's a retelling of Luke's Gospel by, the author's name isn't on the front, I was thinking I could refer to that. I think it's up on the screen because um, the picture I got there must be a different edition. Emma Randall has illustrated it, and Gemma Willis has written this retelling. And um, it's a bit like the style of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I think. Um, some of those watching would be more familiar with the Wimpy Kid books than uh, perhaps some of us in this building. But here, there, so there are various interactive things, and uh, you at home may like to be drawing a picture while you're... Um, watching and listening to this or, or uh, doing something else to keep your hands busy. Here we've got a, a map showing Nazareth is 90 miles 
from Bethlehem. And the story goes on after Jesus' birth. Luke jumps ahead 12 years. And uh, this is what we're going to read from the, the actual Bible a bit later. Tim's going to read to us. But here's a retelling of the story as well. Jesus grew up a bit. He watched Joe make stuff out of wood. Some things he made were pretty awesome, some not so much. Joe made big tables, small tables, square tables, round tables, four-legged tables, three-legged tables, two-legged tables, they didn't work very well, and wooden spoons. Joe also made quite a few wonky tables, but he turned those into special sculptures and told people they were meant to be that way. Awkward, what kind of table would you have made? There's a space in this book to draw it here, so uh, maybe if you've got pen and paper at home, you might like to be doodling on that. As Jesus got older, he got stronger and taller and smarter and wiser. God made sure that he had everything he needed. We remember as well that in the intervening time, God had made sure Jesus was kept safe as they, they ran away to Bethlehem, to, keep, to, to Egypt, to get away from Herod who wanted to kill Jesus, and then came back again. Because Jesus, Mary, and Joe were Jewish, every year they went to the temple in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. What were they celebrating? Find out more with the Bible in Exodus 12. That's some background reading for after the service if you're interested. There were always hundreds of people eating strange food and saying lots of prayers. So it was pretty easy for Jesus to disappear among the crowds. And one year, when he was about 12, Mary and Joe actually left him behind. There's a, a picture here of um, the whole crowd of them traveling to Jerusalem. And uh, somebody's saying, are we nearly there yet? And someone else is on a donkey saying, I need a wee. I really do now. And someone else saying, is it lunchtime yet? They didn't even notice, this is back, Mary and Joe had left Jesus behind. They didn't even notice he was missing for a whole day. Mary said to Joe, I thought he was with you. Then Joe said to Mary, no, I thought. He was with you. Then Mary said to her friends, is, is Jesus with you? And they said, no, we thought he was with you. You should keep your eye on him, you know. And so it went on. After a while, when they finally realized that Jesus wasn't with anybody, they decided they should probably go back and look for him. Oops. Eventually. Three days later, Mary and Joe found Jesus hanging out in the temple with all the teachers, asking loads of questions and saying things that even they didn't understand. He looked completely chilled, and he didn't even seem to have noticed that Mary and Joe had gone. When Mary told him how worried they'd been and told him they'd looked everywhere for him, Jesus said, well, why were you looking for me? Obviously, I'd be here in the temple because that's where my dad lives. Everyone stared. And Mary looked at Joe and whispered, what's he talking about? We live in Nazareth. Mary and Joe kept a very close eye on Jesus as they made their way back to Nazareth for the second time. In fact, Mary kept a very close eye on Jesus as he grew older and stronger, and she continued to wonder. Jesus was learning and growing, and that little snapshot, which is the only thing we know about Jesus' childhood from his infancy right through to when he was about 30, uh, he was 
finding things out and learning and growing and becoming stronger and, and wiser. And that's something that we all do as human beings as we grow up. And when do we stop growing up? Well, it shouldn't really be ever. We keep growing and learning. Physically, we might reach our peak height and then start gradually getting smaller again, but we keep on learning and we grow more into the people that God wants us to be as we're trusting in Jesus and his spirit is changing us. So um, I'd like to spend quite a bit of today's service. Later on, we'll um, hear from one another. Some people have emailed me already because I gave warning of this in the, in the email update. Some people might be texting in and some of us here might like to come up to the microphone and say something. Um, and this is the question, how have you learned or grown in 2020? Um, it's so easy just to be negative about 2020. Let's see what we can take positively from this year. Before we do that, we're, we're going to have our, our Bible reading and think a bit more about that. And before that, we're going to hear a uh, poem coming up on a video uh, written in 2020, as will be clear when you, when you hear it, by Andrew Roycroft, thinking about Bethlehem, year zero. Bethlehem, year zero. This year, none of the pieces are in place. No finishing touch, just the rush headlong to make the best of things. More make do than make believe. A clambering to retrieve family under one roof. To pluck some safety from the dragon's teeth. To make a place for joy again, long looked for after labour pains. The grace to hold our griefs in one hand and with the other, just hold on. This year has no precedent, just more numbers from the government, just more bitterness of argument, sick hearts retching on hope deferred, reading tight between the lines for a word that might flare across the firmament and speak deliverance. But this year we have made the best of things, found shelter here against the odds, adapted what has come to hand, rested in the grander plan that underwrites this circumstance, sees grace instead of blinded chance, and lays in this manger ark the best beside the worst, the light amidst the dark, the king among the filth. And Mary cradles at her breast the head of one who from obscurity will carry heaven's destiny through thorn to crown, dandles with her hand the heel that promised from eternity will crush king death into the ground. This year we have no normal, new or old, but a different day, a dawn, a moment long foretold, now here, this year. Um, let's have uh, Tim now come and read to us from the scriptures. Luke chapter 2 and verses 40 through to 52. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according
someone else has texted sound gone and vision frozen. I think that's nothing we don't know. There's nothing on the screen up here, but welcome back, uh, those at home. Sorry, we've had some technical issues and uh, apparently lost the live stream. I've had one or two texts saying there were difficulties at the beginning of the service and then also loss, loss of sound and vision. I think you missed nearly all of the reading, um, which was from Luke chapter 2. I think let's. Apologies to everyone here, but it won't do us any harm to hear, the, hear God's word twice. Tim, would you come and read it to us again? Thank you. Luke chapter 2 and verses 40 through to 52. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they travelled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I think there are lots of different things we could do with that passage. And so what some people have done, um, in some ways helpfully, is think about the model family and Mary and Joseph and how they in their, their family life, bringing up the Lord Jesus, um, it's hard to know whether you should take as a positive or a negative example that they took their eye off him and lost him. Um, I guess parents need to, we need to be responsible for our children. Um, maybe that says something positive though about the, the community that they could trust they were with or their friends and family in this big party that were um, we're going down and uh, trust that Jesus was okay. Um, the fact that they went to Jerusalem, which was a costly thing to spend all that time traveling such a big distance, take that time off work for the festival, um, for the feast, showed how they, they prioritized their relationship with God as God's people. And I think there's something for us to learn as church members of the importance of church being with God's people. Um, we're still in 2020 with the theme verse, let's 
not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of, in, of doing, but let's encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. But I think primarily this passage is here to tell us not about how to bring up our children, but to tell us something about Jesus. And there are two sides, really, to the person of Jesus that it would be worth us thinking about. Now, one is ways in which he is like us. And the other is going to be ways in which he is unlike us. He's unique. Because, of course, Jesus is fully human and he is one of us. He's God with us. So he enters into our human experience and we see some of that in this passage here. He, he's also different from us because he is fully God as well. And there are certain aspects to what he did that are not for us to copy as if we were him, but to follow his example and, and be like him, bearing in mind that we are not him and uh, we point to him. But he was, he was like us in that he needed to learn and grow. He needed to learn things. Um, verse 40 is the kind of bridge verse from the birth narratives and the first few weeks of Jesus' life through to this thing um, later on in his childhood at age 12. The child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. This process of growing and becoming strong is a natural human thing as created people. Uh, God has, has given us this gift and those of us who are parents have the joy of seeing that as our children get bigger and start to beat us at chess and um, table tennis and things. And Jesus didn't even though he was the omniscient God, in some sense didn't know everything when he was a child. He needed to learn. And he was the omnipotent God, but he was in this weak little body that gradually grew bigger as normal healthy human growth brings of growing stronger. And he was, they were like other families in that they had misunderstandings um, who's not had a misunderstanding over Christmas? Uh, I guess uh, nobody's going to be putting their hands up or texting in to tell me they haven't had misunderstandings. Um, but here's a fairly big one for them that wasn't caused by sin, but just by their limited human situation. And... The other thing that's normal and normative about Jesus' relationship with his parents is his obedience of them. Uh, verse 51, he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. So even Jesus took his place as a child under the care and authority of his parents and it's important for us as children and as parents to remember that's the way God has ordered us in society that children should obey their parents and that's the the right way parents have this great responsibility then of not just leaving children to decide what's best in everything and they decide what to do but Parents help teach the children and so tell them sometimes what to do and punish them when they do wrong and, uh, and train them in the way they should go. Um, the, one really highly controversial issue is uh, over how you look after a baby um, and do you have a, a regimented time you know, uh, routine or, or should it be child-led and you feed them when they say they're hungry and all that kind of thing? And so I don't want to get too deeply into that. And I'm sure there's a lot of room for 
each family to make our own judgment over what is best on that. But just an important principle to say, the baby doesn't actually know what's best. And it may well be that the mother, the family, the parents in particular, know uh, what's best. And so maybe having more control over when the child is asleep and feeding and so on is a good thing. Um, and so uh, don't put all that responsibility onto the little child of deciding when it's time to sleep and when it's time to feed, but uh, help them and train them. Um, I hope that's not too controversial to say that. I do want to, to um, respect the range of different ways of doing that, but there is a, a principle of parents having authority that as children grow up as well, that we still need to exercise some authority and, uh, and not just leave them to their own devices. And children be grateful when parents are making an effort at that. Sometimes parents make mistakes, uh, but it's our responsibility when we're under their care to, um, to obey them. And so uh, that changes as we grow up and leave home and perhaps get married and start our own home, uh, where we still, there's still one of the Ten Commandments to honor our parents, uh, which isn't expressed in obedience any longer, but is very much in, in honoring, which I think we, we can keep doing as our parents grow older and more reliant on us. And even after they've died, we honor their memory. Um, so Jesus was like us in these ways, in his childhood. Their family was like our family in many ways. And Jesus set the example of what we should be like in his obedience of his parents. But then Jesus is very unlike us as well in that, uh, well, look at what he's doing when he disappeared if you have a 12-year-old and they disappear for a few days in a city in a festival time, are you going to be worried about what they're up to? Are they going to be getting up to mischief? Are they going to be putting themselves in danger? Well, um, Jesus was eager to learn, and so he was there asking questions. Um, that's, I suppose, in both, both categories, isn't it? He's like us and what we should be like, and it's great when... Children do want to learn and ask questions and, uh, and, and behave well. Um, but also Jesus had this extraordinary ability and depth of understanding because of who he was, that not just any child could go into the temple and astonish everybody with their wise questions and, and answers. But uh, there was something very special about Jesus which came from his unique identity as the Son of God. And so when he said to them in our um, NIV Bibles, he says, uh, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? And I think that word house, it doesn't necessarily just mean in this building, but it could mean about my father's business, just like our word economy comes from the word household. I. He had to be about his father's business. He, he needed to be hearing about people's understanding of God and particularly the religious leader's understanding so that he himself was learning about the scriptures and was learning about the, the uh, environment that he was in. So... In all of this, Jesus, fully human, fully God, sinless, but experiencing um, many of the, the trials and difficulties of uh, our human family life. He grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with men. I'd like to uh, pray now um, 
just one prayer, which is the, the collect for today, the Sunday after Christmas, which seems especially relevant um, here. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, let's hear from one another a bit now about how we've been learning and growing. Um, here are some... Uh, so do text in if you've got text. Put up a hand if you'd like to come up to the microphone at some point and um, we'll get somebody scratching his ear there. I'm not sure whether his hand was up or not. But I've seen Sarah's hand. And so, uh, right... Um, I'll just read some of the ones that have come in in advance first, and then we'll um, hear from Sarah, and then uh, there may be some more texts by then and others as well. So Phil and Molly say, on looking back over the past year, we've found that more and more we need the love, support, and certainty of the Lord in these uncertain times, when each day seems to bring new challenges, the Lord's promise to be with us always is more and more comforting. We wonder how people who don't know the Lord manage. Um, and Phil has just texted some follow-up to that. Uh, in addition to learning much more about my relationship with Jesus... I have learned lots about my relationship with friends, family, colleagues, and acquaintances. It's been a steep learning curve for which I thank the Lord. And Hilary says, during the course of this year, I'm reading this quite slowly because I think Hilary's packed a lot into a few words here. Unlike any other in my experience... I find I've grown in acceptance of the lack of easy answers and solutions to life's complexities. But faced anew with my own fragility, vulnerability, and powerlessness, I have learned to recognize time and again in a myriad of different ways the still small voice of the Father's tender, loving care and his grace to carry me through. Thank you, Hilary, for that. And uh, referring, many people will recognize the still small voice to Elijah's experience um, where he had an encounter with God that involved an earthquake and a, a, a raging wind and a fire and the Lord not being in any of those, but then speaking to Elijah through a still small voice. Jan Wilcock um, says, my thought for this year is from the children's commandments, number 10. Now, I didn't know what the children's commandments were, whether um, Jan had got some alternative to the 10 commandments, but I, it looks as though this is a, a, a paraphrase for children of one of the real Ten Commandments, because it says, just be happy with what you've got. Um, and the Tenth Commandment says, of course, you shall not covet. And she goes on, my best Christmas message was from my miscreant nephew, Adam, who could not be with us because of COVID. He phoned to tell me he had the best day ever helping to cook 100 plus meals for the needy with the local churches. He says he'll never feel alone again. Thank you, Jan, for that. And Angela Donald says, I know what I've truly learned this year. Human life is so fragile that we must depend even more on the comfort and peace that God can give us if we trust him. As Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
and lean not on your own understanding. Thank you, Angela. Let's hear from Sarah now, and then I've got a few more to read out as well, and there may be others from within here. So do come up to the microphone, Sarah. Sorry, John, I don't think I'm really good in texting, and also I think it would have been a very long um, text. <laughs> um, yeah, just wanted to say um, I certainly learned quite a lot um, during this the whole situation with lockdown and everything because before that, um, for a number of years, I sort of God was on my very kind of bottom of the list and he wasn't a priority in my life um, uh, anymore. So I was just mainly wanted to have success in scientific side of things with my science background and uh, and also the modeling world and you know it was just work was just non-stop with attending these sorts of events um, it was kind of no room for God anymore um, for me so but with the lockdown it's got obviously slowed everything down our labs shut down and the there was no more of these high-end events um, in the modeling side and um, no more red carpets, nothing like that. So it's just made me really think what's the most important thing. And uh, anyway, I started reading my Bible again and um, I, I felt really blessed, even though I know many people have been struggling, but it's certainly been a very blessed time for me just to kind of know my priorities and put God first in my life and um, I'm sort of um, kind of spreading this message to all other people around me as well and just the fact that I really realized that science can't rescue the humanity even though it's we are so proud of it or everything but I, I just felt absolutely helpless that how can I help but just felt just by prayer I can I can help people the most. So yeah, it's just our life is really fragile and just we get the priority right in our lives is the most important thing. So sorry, that was very long. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Would anyone else here like to come up and say anything? Um, Ray Bennett says the hymn through all the changing scenes of life has brought comfort to many Christians down the ages in a year of trouble and joy trouble through the death of friends a family divorce the joy of seeing our boys grandchildren growing up involvement in pastoral care I've experienced the deliverance he affords to all who trust him and the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ when we're allowed to, says Ray. Um, thank you, Ray, for uh, drawing attention to that hymn. Let's um, listen to a verse of it and, and I'll just read out the words of the whole hymn first and then we'll listen to it. Through all the changing scenes of life in trouble and in joy the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. Of his deliverance I will boast till all that are distressed from my example comfort take and charm their griefs to rest. O oh, magnify the Lord with me with me exalt his name when in distress to him I called he to my rescue came the hosts of God encamp around the dwellings of the just deliverance he affords to all who on his succor trust O oh, make but trial of his love experience will decide how blessed they are 
and only they who in his truth confide. Fear him, ye saints, and you will then have nothing else to fear. Make you his service your delight. He'll make your wants his care. is apparently watching and has texted in, reminded afresh of God's faithfulness and constant presence, whatever the circumstances. Um, that's particularly uh, encouraging to us as um, Dad's gone into hospital again last night um, and seems to be, well, yesterday and has spent the night there, seems to be doing well this morning. Um, and she says, thank you for honouring your parents as well, which I know I do a, a very imperfect job of. Um, Anne-Marie says, we've learnt so much from home group this year and recently going through the generosity project together has been really helpful. That's from Tim and Anne-Marie. Um, last chance to send in a text. I'm sorry if I've missed anybody's um, do because I think some of the texts are about the technical things so I'm ignoring those for now um, and last chance now as we um, move on let's pray Father God looking back over the year we recognise some themes coming out in what people have said and um, particularly how what a solid rock you are we've seen uh, in some ways we felt as though the rug's been pulled from under our feet and seen people around us experiencing that and yet we know that you don't change thank you that the pandemic hasn't taken you by surprise thank you that you provide what is needed and that as your people we can be confident and can rely on you where we recognize we can't rely on our own efforts to sort everything out even uh, though so much hope is placed in science science can't solve all our problems and yet we we thank you for the, the gifts that you've given and these amazing abilities that, that people have come up with a vaccine within a year of a new strain of virus uh, appearing. And we pray for your blessing on the, the rollout globally of various vaccines. Thank you that your always with us and thank you for the comfort of knowing that and we pray for those who don't know the Lord as Phil and Molly say we don't know how they manage without this comfort and so, so we ask that in your mercy you would open more people's eyes to the Lord Jesus Thank you for speaking to us and for what you've taught us. Thank you for the gift of contentment that so, so many of us have been exploring this year in a different way from before. Thank you for how we've been able to take joy in some of the smaller and less significant things in life and some of the really significant things that we've undervalued, taken for granted or ignored. 
Thank you for the joy in watching children and grandchildren. Thank you for the, the trees and the flowers and the sunshine that we appreciated so much in the spring. Thank you for the way communities have rallied round and helped one another and uh, for Jan's nephew being involved in that at, at Christmas. Please help us to follow that advice from the Proverbs which Angela has drawn to our attention. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And we pray that you would lift up our hearts and enable us to keep uh, praising you in our hearts and, and with our tongues and fingers on the keyboards and all that kind of thing as well in the different ways we're able to speak and sing your praises. Please be with those who are, are finding it difficult to rejoice in any of this but are feeling lonely and bowed down. Help them to cast their burdens on to Jesus. And please lift them up. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you those who've come in physically and uh, those who've joined on YouTube. Uh, have a good week. And we'll be back next Sunday at 10.45, um, probably for a more typical St. Nicholas-type time uh, than this slightly different one today. Um, we'll be live streaming, God willing, and uh, also in person. So do book in by Thursday if you can for that. And nine o'clock at St. Mary's Claverton, which is in person only, and it's communion there next Sunday. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.